as you can see even on social media, war hoax are more popular than D. Global South also needs to be represented in this body, especially Africa, but also some other modern key players, such as, for instance, Turkey. This shift uh, towards uh, isolationist uh, agendas not only weakens the fabric of our interconnected world, but also sets the stage for a future where collaboration is a victim of self-interest. Hello, dear friends. Welcome back to Peacemaker by Adnan Habul. Today we are talking about not so cool stuff happening in our world. We are diving into the mess of the conflicts, shaky diplomacy, and a future that would be scary and dystopian if we don't step up. If you stay with me long enough, you will get a better insight into the current situation and what can be done to improve things. So let's begin with our episode and listen carefully. So first, let's talk about the erosion of diplomacy. In the ever-evolving uh, world, we cannot ignore the threatening shadows that loom over the horizon. The 21st century uh, has witnessed the emergence of new conflicts, the absence of sincere diplomacy and a dystopian uh, descent into a world where international relations and standards seem to be losing their once cherished significance. As we navigate the complexities of the modern geopolitical landscape, it becomes increasingly evident that uh, new worlds are popping up like uh, mushrooms. Uh, from territorial disputes to resource-driven conflicts, uh, th the reasons may vary, uh, but the common thread is uh, the unsettling rise in global unrest. Take for instance the tragedy in Gaza or Ukraine, where historical grievances and contemporary power struggles ignited powder kegs that could have far-reaching and more dire consequences. In this age of connectivity, we assumed or hoped uh, that diplomacy would flourish. However, what we observe is a plain lack of sincere diplomatic efforts. As you can see even on social media, war hoax are more popular than D, us, uh, those who promote peace and diplomatic solutions, cooperation, business, and so on. I have a message for the war hoax, or better, uh, the internet warriors, such as Ben Shapiro or similar dudes who advocate for war and the uh, they call uh, for uh, annihilation of uh, the enemies, while millions of sub their subscribers are watching them and thinking, wow, this is cool. My message to the people like this will come a bit later in this video. They won't like it. The traditional avenues for dialogue seem to be congested with the uh, hollow uh, words and a reluctance to address the root causes of conflicts. The failure of global powers to engage in meaningful uh, discussions, coupled with the rise of national, nationalist uh, sentiments, has left the diplomatic stage barren and deprived of solutions. Even the international institutions or organizations that used to be the fora for diplomatic solutions are now crippled and put on infusion and ventilators, with high uncertainty of their survival. The erosion of values once held dear in international relations is painting a dystopian picture. 
Nations are increasingly turning inward, prioritizing their interests over global cooperation and global peace. Multilateral agreements are crumbling, and the very foundations of diplomacy are being shaken. This shift uh, towards uh, isolationist uh, agendas not only weakens the fabric of our interconnected world, but also sets the stage for a future where collaboration is a victim of self-interest. Within the political chess games and strategic posturing, it is crucial to acknowledge the human toll of these emerging conflicts. Civilians caught in the crossfire of heavily armed sadists, uh, displaced populations and the breakdown of societies are the harsh realities of the new wars. The lack of sincere diplomatic efforts not only fails to prevent these crises, but also worsens the suffering of those who have uh, no stake in the geopolitical power plays. As we stand in this uh, critical juncture in history, it is imperative to recognize the urgency of revising the trends that threaten to transform our world into a dystopian nightmare. Rebuilding of pillars of sincere diplomacy, fostering open dialogue, and re, uh, rekindling uh, a commitment to shared values are uh, essential step in preventing the descent into a global arena defined by conflict and chaos. Yes, I am again speaking about the reform of the United Nations and its Security Council in the current format. In short, no nation should have the power of veto in its hands, and the current five uh, permanent members should expand to at least 15 with the uh, majority vote principle. Global South also needs to be represented in this body, especially Africa, but also some other modern key players, such as, for instance, Turkey. The alternative is a world where the shadows we uh, see today become the harsh reality of tomorrow, and the decline in val uh, valuing in international relations leave us uh, navigating a darker, more uncertain future. But before I deliver my message to the war hawks and internet warriors, please hit that subscribe button and let's move on. So I will uh, start this message like this. In the haunting echoes of emerging wars, I, as a war veteran, am compelled to address my perspective to the discourse on global conflicts. The world, with its uh, brewing storms of uh, unrest, needs to hear the somber truth from those who have endured the most miserable of conditions, the war. As I voice, uh, voice uh, out these words, I'm not a simple commenter, but uh, one who, uh, who has survived one of the bloodiest conflicts after uh, World War II in 20th century. And with a heavy heart, I'm telling you where are all, uh, we are all heading. Do you know what is a fighter's reality? Firstly, allow me to strip away the glamour that uh, movies often decorate war with. As a war veteran, I've walked through the trenches, uh, felt the biting cold seeping into my bones, and faced the hunger that distressed the soul. War in its truest form is not the heroic spectacle portrayed on the silver screen. 
It is a relentless and uh, unforgiving force that tests the limits of human endurance. A grim reality of modern warfare is that the adversary is often unseen, hidden behind a veil of long-range weaponry. Combatants are not so often engaged in face-to-face battles. Instead, they find themselves at the mercy of distant forces, such as drones and artillery shells. The fear is real, and the uncertainty is constant. This is a realistic departure from the romantic notions of the war, where warriors meet and the bat- uh, at the battlefield with a clear vision and understanding of their enemy. Now it's totally different. In the trenches, uh, the average soldier faces the harsh reality of the war. The scarcity of resources, the constant threat of danger, and the merciless uh, strain on mental and physical well-being are the companions of those who bear the weight of the conflict. While we endure the misery, it's worth thinking about who truly suffers and who obtains benefits. So my call to war enthusiasts is uh, instead of military solutions, why don't you think about uh, uh, first diplomatic uh, approach? To those who may be enthusiasts for military solutions, I extend a serious plea. War is not a venture to be advocated or incited, un- uh, unless uh, they will be the first to march in and fight. Soon they would discover a highway to the most miserable conditions one can measure. As combatants, we shoulder the burdens, face the nightmares and bear the scares that last a lifetime. In contrast, those who initiate or incite war along with their families are often far removed from the the suffering they propagate. It is time to question the attractions of uh, conflict and consider who stands to gain while countless others endure unimaginable uh, hardship. In our pursuit of a better world, Let us not forget the lessons engraved in the scars of uh, war veterans. Diplomacy, sober dialogue and a commitment to peace must take precedence over the misery of conflict. War is not a grand adventure, but a road to misery and hell. As we stand at the crossroads of our shared humanity, It is my eager hope that the privileged reconsider the cost of conflict before they started, and together we either choose a path that leads us away from the shadows of war, or fight together for the cause they called while inciting the military solution of the problem. Right? In the end, let me remind you, 2024 is the year of elections in various countries. Be very careful and selective about who you want to represent you. Don't be victims of propaganda, because you may soon become a victim of uh, someone's kamikaze drone or artillery shell, a cannon fodder. This is all for today. Be good and safe. I love I love you all and bye.